Hello everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 46, where you email me your Flat Earth questions, or just any questions really, to msargent23 at comcast.net, that is M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and if I don't read it on Strange World, which is on Truth Truth Frequency Radio, then I will read it here, so let's just get right to it. First one is called Astronaut Questions. Hi, Mark. Now that the space shuttle is definitely defunct, how are the astronauts getting up there? Why don't we ever hear how they are getting up there or down? I can't remember the last time there was a report about U.S. astronauts hitching a ride. And if so, how does that work? Where do the rockets go when they take off if not into space? Where would the space shuttle go if not into space? Is there a base or some place where it lands? Where do you think rockets land after they take off? We never hear about how they get up there anymore. The astronauts just magically appear on the ISS. I can't even anymore. Ugh, Sam. Uh, yeah, Sam, I agree. Ugh. Yeah, they, they, they pretty much glossed over everything. The, the space shuttle program's gone, and we don't see pictures of the astronauts going into rockets anymore. It's like all of a sudden, they're just magically there on the ISS, who, but where they've hitched rides from other people. The part that bugs me is that they don't even really show the docking sequence anymore. That's the part that kills me. So there's people coming in from other countries, and they don't show them in the rockets, you know, jostling around or anything. It's they, they show the capsule sort of nearing the space station, and then to save money, they just cut to the interior. It's like, oh, yeah, we're here. No problem. Nobody's ever had a problem docking. Nobody's ever died. You know, there's been, you think after all these years, from Mercury and Gemini and Apollo and Soyuz and all that stuff. You'd think we'd lose somebody up there, but you can't. You can't kill people because then you put the budget into question. That is our, how much are human lives worth? Is it really worth it to spend that sort of money? And so on and so on. So yeah, the longer they go where there's, I mean, there's no even, not even injuries. You know, people accidentally lose an arm through an airlock or whatever it is. It's it's pretty amazing. So yeah, totally agree with you. They're glossing it all over. This one's called Queen News of the Flat World, and I know this is a long time ago. Hi, Mark. Many years ago, my oldest sister owned a Queen album called News of the World. Although the album art was admittedly a gruesome sight for me as a young kid, I was accustomed to seeing worse images elsewhere. Nevertheless, there was always something especially disturbing about that particular record cover even later on in life. The cover and inside artwork show a giant robot kneeling beside a domed structure, which it had broken apart to grab the occupants inside. Apparently, the news of the world is that we are in a flat, enclosed system that will one day be destroyed by someone bigger and more powerful than us. The Flat Earth Awakening has helped me realize how the media has flaunted the reality of where we are for many years. It has also answered many puzzling questions I have grappling with as a Christian. Indeed, science has lied to us about way more than evolution. Keep up the good work. Blessings to you always. Regards, Jeff. And he sent me a actual picture of the uh, Queen News of the World cover. Which, you know what? I, I completely forgot that I had that in there. So I'm going to add that into my slideshow. Maybe I'll even get it on this one. We'll see. So let me put that into that folder right there. Next one's called NASA is hiring a planetary protection officer to defend the planet. And yeah, you guys can look this up. NASA is hiring a planetary protection officer to defend the planet. It said businessinsider.com. And there's many people that have covered this. I, but check it out. Planetary protection officer. That's really all you should search for on Google. And you will find that, which is hilarious. This one's called Flat Earth Meetup. Hopefully this wasn't too late and hopefully I didn't miss this one. Uh, hey Mark, big fan. I was on Twitter today trying to work on my truth-inspired tweets along with pursuing through tweets and came across a person with the handle Fegelpez. And we chatted for a bit about Flat Earth Meetups. I'm in my Long Island, Queens and I'm looking to find meetup groups or perhaps start one. I was told to email you, so here I am. I'm Tom, by the way, former, Na former NASA enthusiast and former firm believer in the heliocentric model. Current five-year flat earther. Thanks for doing what you do. It's amazing how easy it is to figure it out once you've been shown the clues. I try spreading the word as best as possible, but here, getting stickers made and slapping them on the trains, writing on money, etc. There are a lot of ad hominem outbursts, and you can imagine being in New York City, what it must be like when debating. 
I hear some mean shit. <laughs> anyway, just wanted to see uh, if you had any info on meetups. Keep fighting the good fight, Tom. Yeah, Tom, hopefully you're listening to this. Just type in Flat Earth Meetups into YouTube and you will find as many. Uh, there's a whole bunch of promos. In fact, I just put out three this week. Uh, the one, the big one that was supposed to happen in the tri-state area of New York actually happened, but the, the lead guy that was supposed to, to be involved, he got deathly ill. He didn't die, but uh, he'll I'm sure he'll be doing a, another one here pretty soon. This one's called Interesting Find. Hi, Mark. I'm the USDA surveyor you interviewed in April of 2016. FYI, you may not be aware of this in Strange World Episode 1. Fireworks date back the fireworks dates back to April of 2015, currently with 14,000 views and 21 comments. Of those 21 comments, one stands out. A warning and ominous threat made by Judith Resnick, Harvard Law Professor and Tau Beta Pi member, posted a year ago. Look up Judith Resnick and you find out that she blew up on the Space Shuttle Challenger in 86 along with the school teacher Krista McAuliffe. Why is a dead astronaut handing out threats to you on YouTube episode one on Strange World Flat Earth? For what it's worth, Ray Goodwin. And yeah, you know what? I'm going to save his info because uh, I had forgotten his phone number. And it was a great interview with that surveyor. And uh, yeah, the, the very first episode of Strange World I did, Strange World 1, I talked about how I uh, got in trouble for fireworks during college. This one is called Flat Earth Map. Hello, sir. My name is Kishore Johnson. I'm an engineering graduate from Kerala, India. Next month, I will move to Italy for doing my master's degree program. I've been researching Flat Earth for two years and wrote a book last month, The Global Deception. I've been watching your videos. I think you are supremely talented and immensely smart person. Well, thank you. There is a Flat Earth map in my book. My father helped me create a map. He is an artist. I think I got the map right. I could send the map via email if you want to take a look or you can download my ebook titled The Global Deception from Amazon Kindle app. Please let me know, and it gives me his email address. You know what, I'm just gonna respond real quick. And I'll say, sorry for the delay. Yes, please send me the map. Regards, Mark. Oop. All right, there we go. There you go, you just heard me responding live to an email. This one's called Earth Truth. Mark, I began watching Earth Truth videos about a year ago on and off. I am on the fence, but I'm leaning your way. I would like to discuss some aspects of this topic. Are you still receiving calls? Thanks. David Samuel Horde. Uh, yeah, I am receiving calls, but generally I have to screen them because so many people have questions. And I, I don't mind that people have questions, but they'll, they, they send me questions literally 20 minutes into the, uh, the Flat Earth Clues which, again, you've got to get through part of the journey before you start asking me questions. And there's so many resources out there that you can look at. You don't need me to, to get through most of this journey. But I totally appreciate that, that you guys want to ask me questions. If you have some really, really hard questions that you don't think is out there on YouTube, which is pretty unlikely, feel free to shoot me something and I, I will do what I can. This one's called... I can open it. YouTube Curiosity. Mr. Sergeant, I was watching your video on the Flat Earth Conspiracy, not sure why I'm emailing you, except to ask, do you still believe in it? Why does it matter? Why is it hidden? I've only started watching the video, but I'm curious. See, right there. And I just talked about it. I get these emails all the time, which is, I just started watching your Flat Earth Clues, and I know, I, you know, I do some of those subliminal messages, or whatever they want to call it, the, the pacing, the cadence. And I say, well, you know, just call me. Do your own research and ask questions. And then I put my phone number in there and people's like, I must call him. And they do. People, I get calls all the time and emails all the time. This guy started his journey back. This email is written all the way back in August 2nd. And I'm sure he is much farther along. So good for him, man. This one's called Hello, Mark. Literally, hello, Mark. My name is Austin. I am 28 years old and been a flat earther for about six months. I It's been a wild ride since I started to see with my own eyes. To me, it's simple. There is just no way to ever experience the earth as a spinning ball. Therefore, it's just another bunk theory that tries to describe 
uh, our reality and fails miserably. One of the biggest realizations I have embraced is that your senses dictate your reality and you should learn to trust them and understand how they work. To me, the earth is something so much more than just a shape. It is our home. And here is, there is nothing else like it. I wrote a poem I was hoping you would share. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm going to read it. It's called The Charlatan by Austin Fisher. Narrative, reality, conceived since birth, truth disguised, conspiracies lie, hold your breath, save the earth, don't forget your money and tie, magic religion, mind control matrix, critical thinking, anti-paradigm, mindless zombie terrorist basics, pseudo-intellects, thought crime, dived and conquer wins the game, perpetual propaganda war machine, choose either side, what a shame, TV is reality, haven't you seen? Defend your captor, Uncle Tom said. Close your eyes, go back to bed. Thanks a lot, man. Love what you're doing for Flat Earth. Take it easy, Austin. Oh, thanks, Austin. I don't get a lot of poems. But yeah, that's pretty good. This one's called Catfish. Hey, Mark, just wanted to say thank you for having Zach on. I missed the live show yesterday due to a late night at work. I was able to catch it today on YouTube. Thanks for posting those so fast. Really wish I would have had the time and could have called in. I was able to hear some interesting stuff from him that I hadn't heard before. Anyway, thanks again. Uh, in, insert funny flat earth email ending here. <laughs> Dave. Thanks, Dave. And yeah, that was, that was a good interview. This one's called Hello from South Oregon. And it is written in all caps, but I will not try to yell. And I'll see if I can punch through this. Dear Mark Sargent, I've really appreciated your knowledgeable videos on the flat plane of the world. I wish I could attend your meetup in Portland, but in this heat, it is just too far for me to travel in being a senior lady in Grants Pass. Oh, wow. You know, that's really great because uh, there's that Grants Pass one coming up. I got to remember to uh, I got to remember to send this to her. Uh, it is said quite a lot that older people don't change so easily as being younger. I can tell you that is not true. I am also a preterist. I have not used that word before. In faith, believing all prophecies of Christ have been fulfilled in the first covenant age. I wanted to add a couple of thoughts for you to consider. I haven't seen nearly all your videos, so maybe you have already touched on this. Another big factor of the pushback of this knowledge is the fact of evolution. This completely kills that fake theory, and that scares the governments of the world. There is no way after knowing this knowledge that anyone could possibly believe we were involved here, evolved here on Earth by accident from some tiny amoeba that crawled out of the ocean. That is so ridiculous that it's laughable. Also, governments are so arrogant as to think we are at the top of the time bending effect in knowledge as if no one before us had any high-end technology. Since I am hearing that many Christian believers are joining this new knowledge of the flat of the world being flat, I thought it important enough to write you about how this kills the evolution conspiracy. I am also doing an in-depth study of God's world versus his earth, and there is a difference. I won't comment until I am done. My learning comes from the Holy Spirit of learning, but I have seen a picture of a square earth of where of which the flat world is set upon, and being the habitable part of earth, that is a more accurate portrayal. I watched a very sweet older believing man on the flat earth and he kept referring to the glass dome. It's not glass. Even though Hillary kept remarking about breaking the glass ceiling, it is as strong as molten glass. Job 37, 18. Ha hast thou with him spread out the sky, which is strong, and as a molten looking glass? This new insight that you are helping to become recognized is so important for another reason. It is forcing many Christians to actually read God's word, which has been somewhat forgotten. There is going to be much greater pushback on this, so be careful, alert, and aware. God bless you for your great contribution to the word of God. Kind regards, Judith. And yeah, I will email her. i got to put this in my other folder because there's actually a grant pass meetup i just did i literally just did the trailer for that yesterday so fantastic timing good thing i did the email thing or i would have completely forgot it hopefully she was watching anyway this one's called your recent eclipse video the eclipse umbra is moving west to east because the earth is traveling around the sun at sixty-seven thousand miles an hour while pointing while points on the earth are traveling only at a thousand miles an hour the rotation of the earth is of little significance as the moons revolving around the earth is also of little importance. The umbro travels west to east because the earth literally runs west east runs east so fast that the umbra stands still for the duration of the eclipse. Terry. Well, it's a nice idea, Terry. 
but there's also bigger questions to consider like one how is a 2100 mile object in diameter being the moon producing a 70 mile shadow that's a what 90 97 percent decrease in shadow size show me where you can do that in a lab under any conditions just saying this one's called you're not moving in grim rail depot world of warcraft Hey Mark, I found this interesting and it may be interesting to you as both the father of Flat Earth and as a gamer. In the World of Warcraft, there is a dungeon called Grim Rail Depot. I know it. The last phase of the dungeon takes place on a seemingly fast-moving orcish train. However, as this video by the late Haven of Haven Games shows us, the train upon which you are standing on is not what is moving at all. And he gives me a video. This reminds me of the whole heliocentric versus geocentric idea. Another dungeon in WoW does this as well. It's called the Maw of Souls. Yeah, it was an interesting. I actually watched that video and I've been on that train. And what he's saying is the train isn't moving. The train is literally standing still. What they do, because it's more efficient in the development phase, is they just move the landscape around you. So the set is moving the train doesn't have to move. That way, you can you can um, the overall grid is much much smaller. You don't have to build this giant grid to where the train's moving across. You can just because you you're not gonna be able to see that far down anyway. So you just create the landscape and you have it have it go flying by you. Because remember what I said: the people cannot determine whether you're moving or the the landscape's moving or you're moving or the, or the cars next to you is moving it's uh, we've got human beings have a horrible relative motion weakness it's like it was genetically built into us so great great stuff thank you and you guys can look that up if you want just type in in fact i'll, I'll click on the video real quick it's called uh how it really looks grim rail depot and what they did was they used one of the editors and showed you how they how they pulled it off it's very very clever this one is called Matter of Truth. Mark, we the people that stand to choose to discern truths at the very place in which we live with opened eyes and steadfast awareness falter in our efforts to prove that which has been hidden from us. Yes, we can see with our eyes and hearts and test these things, measure these things, make others aware of these things, each and every one of us. But with great unrest, should we the people that have come to know and realize said truths be pushed beyond and like no other movement that has ever been nor will come to be we must fight for what is ours and belongs to all that dwell upon this great earth the truth and nature of this place the line is now drawn the tipping point has passed there is no gentle return the time is now and without refrain that a movement called the truth becomes no less than a revolution who are we if our reality can be dictated and controlled by a few our histories written while we sleep we the people of this great earth demand no less than the truth we will not and for no longer sit silent and blind towards those that hide this earth for they live we sleep and this great but costly burden falls on those that live with eyes open and see past and beyond the lies to pursue the only measure that remains definitive proof of this place in so much that it cannot and shall not be argued nor debated by those that keep the lies and withhold god-given truths of this place the fact is to say that we have our own part in a movement that reveals the truth is not good enough this is what allows it to remain a movement but the truth reveals that we all each and every one of us has a duty to stand and remain upward together to ensure the nature of this place comes into the awareness of all that live upon her great service movements have always inched their way along unwavering is a revolution without doubt nor recourse without consequence nor personal fear and to ensure change for all humankind not for us but for the future and in the pursuit of truth we are all responsible for this equal goal divided we shall fail but only together will these truths surface for all to awaken the time for polite questioning of science has passed and as people for whom this place was created we must now demand these things have now become a matter of duty for all to be awakened and informed the earth is flat enclosed and stationary and that's by Sleep No More. Oh, I'm sorry. Sleep No More. Thanks and God bless, Jim. That was inspiring, Jim. Seriously, you could you could write some of the old school constitutions. That's awesome. Great stuff. This one's called Watch August 21st Eclipse. 
West to East on the Flat Earth on YouTube. Uh, Two-minute video description. According to the Book of Enoch, the sun and the moon are the same size. They are in the firmament over the Earth. The sun completes the cycle of the year in 364 days. The moon completes its cycle in 28 or 29 days, depending on the month. The moon cycle falls behind the sun cycle every 10 days. I'm sorry, 10 days every 364 days. After 37 moon cycles, the sun and the moon are synced up again and start basically in the same place to repeat this cycle every three years. For the eclipse and the sun, uh, eclipse the sun passes the moon, thus casting a shadow going from west to east. This information is compiled from and found in the book of Enoch, chapter 72 through 82. One other factor, Enoch's descriptions account for the appearance of the top-down shadow movement. Because the sun and the moon are moving in concentric concentric circuits from north to south and back and if somebody can make a better video of this i would appreciate it thanks for watching proverbs 3 5 and 6 and jeremiah 17 7. hopefully i will be able to demonstrate some of the other details in enoch's descriptions at a later time and the video is called i think it's called august 21st eclipse west east flat earth on youtube so thank you for that this one's called questions Mark, I'm very much interested in reaching out to as many people as possible. However, I still have several key concepts and questions that I feel you could help me understand with more clarity. Any time you could afford me is appreciated. Sincerely, Robin. Um, yes, I will write back to Robin on that. This one's called... What's it called? Can you help NASA out? Hello, Mark. Thanks for opening my eye about FE. Please check this out. I got from a freelancer, NASA, asking freelancers to design shield to protect crew members from the cosmic rays. Maybe they ran out of people who want to be part of the big lie. Thanks. Good luck. And yeah, there's a contest. I'm reading this. Yep. The NASA freelancer and NASA are once again teaming up with a brand new contest. We need you to design an origami-inspired shield that protects crews from the health risks associated with galactic cosmic rays. Why not just say cosmic rays? Why, why, why do you have to throw in galactic there? Uh, the world's largest space program needs your help. Are you up to the challenge? Origami cosmic for radiation shielding. Huh. That's interesting. That's this year. And it's out of Australia. Interesting. Hmm. All right then. This next one's called Neil getting knocked out. Flat Earth talks with special guest Zach Yank Yankush, aka Catfish. Uh, Strange World 115. Mark Sargent. The first 20 seconds of the video where Neil gets knocked out made me laugh my head off. I just need to let you know. Ha ha ha. Yeah, I've I've been using that pretty much ever since, and I've modified the audio to to I use another audio clip from it, and it's it's Neil. It's actually Neil is getting hit in in the head with it. Well, it's when it comes back to him, it's a rubber version of the red ball. But he's basically he's kind of making fun of the fact that physics are never wrong, and I thought that was very interesting. So thanks to Neil deGrasse Tyson for helping me with that. This one is called BBC News New Map of Universe's Dark Matter. Mark, I saw this on the BBC News app and thought you uh, should see it. This made me chuckle. It's the scan of the dark matter of the universe. This, that is to say, what must be there, but we can't see it. A bit domey. <laughs> Best regards, Alistair. And it's called the New Map of Universe's Dark Matter. You, researchers have released the most accurate map ever produced of the dark matter in our universe. Uh-huh. That'll be the day. This one's called Urgent. Mark, if the sun is a light ball 109 times the diameter of the Earth, why do we not see the sun's rays shooting past the Earth or uh, on out into space in the night sky when it's night for us? If we can see the moon supposedly reflecting the sun's light, why wouldn't we see the actual rays from the sun that are to be reflected? This irrefutably proves the small and local sun for me. Please let me know your thoughts. This is a very, they're very important to me. There's, uh, maybe there's something I'm just not thinking of. Thanks so much, Hunter. Hmm. Might be right on that one. I mean, there's so many things in the sky that don't make sense that we just take it for granted because science has told us for all these years. 
This one's called Just Thoughts Wondering. Mark, first off, it's Arthur from Rhode Island again. We spoke briefly on the phone a ways back. Still souped. I got to talk to you, the Mark Sergeant. So I was curious with global warming and ice melting, do you ever do that experiment where you fill a glass of water with ice to the brim? When it melts, it stays on that level. Am I right? Uh, by the way, you can read this. Uh, that is, if it's got the right stuff too. It is elevated. It is elevated ice, a wall, in fact. So that experiment that French guy did in the bathtub. I'll pause here. I should have done my research to sound more historically correct. But hear me out. It is not a theory or anything abstract. Uh, it can be demonstrated in any bathroom. Anything already submerged won't change the level of the water. Therefore, with those two factors at play, it's all here all along. Why aren't they monitoring rivers flowing into the ocean? They can't know all ratios of water at all three, three stages worldwide. Why is the water from the ice caps the only water that can affect sea levels? Could, could it be the gravity from the moon, LOL? Surely there would be nothing tangible from that study, but they have no problem name dropping gravity at their disposal. Good points. Interesting. Thank you for that. And what was his name? There was no name. Oh, no, Arthur from Rhode Island. I read so many emails. Okay, uh, this one's called Dome. Hi, Mark. Just saw your video. Well, so far, about 30 minutes of it. But I plan on finishing it, and I have a question. Why do you think the government doesn't want anyone to know that the Earth is flat and that there is a firmament? Like, why would they try so hard to hide that? I've seen a couple of videos about the flat Earth theory, and they've been very good, just nobody has said the motive. Do you happen to have the idea what it could be? Thank you, Monica. And yes, Monica would eventually figure that out as she got deeper into the clues. I didn't really talk about it until, like, clue four or five. This one's called Flat Earth Survival Guide Manual. Hey, Mark, been a fan of yours for a couple of years now. Flat Earth Clues series put me into Flat Earth. Just wanted to see if you could send me the survival guide PDF. Thank you, Anthony. And yes, I did send Anthony, uh, Anthony, Anthony the survival guide. If you guys want a free survival guide, it's called Empty Shelves. I made it after the whole Katrina debacle. And it's about 100 pages long, and I can just shoot it to you. It's only about two megs, and I can send it to you in an email. In email. All you have to do is email me, msergeant23 at comcast.net, and I will... Uh, just put it in the title, I Want Survival Guide, and I'll be happy to give it to you. This one's called Out Spreading the Word. Mark, or should I say the father of flat earth? Ha ha ha. Hi, I'm out today in Waterford, Michigan, promoting people to open their minds. I just saw the guys in the UK pl placing flat earth stickers, research flat earth stickers around town. Awesome idea, but in the day light at a park one might find themselves with a vandalism charge within an hour. So I found a loophole. Sidewalk chalk. I am blanketing the park with research flat earth on everything I can write on. When I run out of chalk, I get kicked out. Uh, I will be sending you some pics. <laughs> Keep it flat, buddy. Keith from Michigan. Awesome, Keith. He's spreading the word. Anyway, you know how. Whatever is most comfortable for you. This one's called North Pole Hole. Hello, Mark. I called into your show on July 4th of this year to let you know about the huge whirlpool that suddenly exists at the North Pole. San Garcia had a broadcast that had covered this topic, and I had wondered if you had heard of it. I told you about a YouTube video. I was going to send you a link, and finally, here it is. Sorry for the delay. As a truck driver, sometimes uh, it gets out of hand. Gosh, sometimes I really suck at trying to figure this email sharing stuff. Just sent the link to the video on a separate message. I know you'll be attending the conference for the debate between Zen Garcia and Professor... Pigeon, spelling may be off on his name, this weekend in Atlanta. Ironically, we will be in Atlanta by tomorrow, but I don't think there'll be any more talks going on. Darn, wish I could be there today. Hope you find this interesting. It's the only video I saw that actually shows motion. If you get a chance, you can share with Zen. Take care. Have a good day. Sheila from Washington. And yeah, I was down there with Zen and Dr. Stephen Pigeon and uh, had a great time. This one's called New License Plate. Good evening, Mark and all my fellow Flat Earthers. Just want to take the time to inform you of yet another addition to the Flat Earth License Plate movement. I've been waiting a while to make the switch, but only because my birthday was the past Friday, 4th of August. Tag renewal being the primary reason. If I could afford it, I'd have, I would have done it several years ago. Now that's all behind me, literally. It's on the back of my car now, and that's so cool. 
I'm sure I'll get some interesting looks and questions from others at the intersections down here. That's my goal, ultimately. Can't thank you enough for all the things you're doing to help this awakening. We're all in this dome together, and it's reassuring knowing there's some good-hearted, intelligent, and humble people out there still. Uh, till this day, I haven't met one angry or aggressive fellow Flat Earth promoter. Uh, by the way, it's a little tough to read because there's, it's just one paragraph. You guys break it up with some spaces and sentences. So, uh, Not one atheist either. I personally don't have enough faith to be an atheist. Not sure where they find the ability to trust the Church of NASA as much as they do. I won't go on forever. I do plan on calling in at some point in the near future. I work at 5.30 a.m. six days a week, so that makes it a real pain to stay up to hear your show. Actually catch the podcast the next morning, though. Come, love to come on and just rap with you on how I got here and what I like to do to wake others up. Again, I really do admire your perseverance in this matter and hope to get to a flat earth meetup in Colorado sometime. Just so damn hot here in Clearwater Beach, Florida. The sun certainly isn't 93 million miles from this coastline. I know that much. Take care out there. Be safe, help others, remain humble, and most importantly, stay flat. Shout out to my buddy, BJ, Mandy, Grant, Colin, and my man, Jesus. I don't think he really knows Jesus, but I'll put it on my car and send you an updated picture. This is the only, only the preliminary photo I took from the print out. They provided me. Feel free to email me, text me. My name is Matt. Oh, Matt. Matt Gillingham. Friends call me Gilly. Not Gilligan? Hmm. Screen name is Iceberg Slim. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm always commenting, and I'm fine if you want to read this on air. I'd be an, it'd be an honor, actually. Uh, having this testimony forever in the ether is totally cool with me. Take care, sir. Maybe I'll hear from you. Peace. You know what? I'm going to respond to him right now. I'm going to say, hey, man, I finally did read this on air today. Will be in a Q and A forty six. Thanks for sending. By the way, did you ever send me that printout? It wasn't attached in this email. Thanks, Mark. There we go. And. It is now in the ether. Well, it will be in the ether forever. So hopefully he got what he wanted out of that. This one's called Fly Earth Question. Mark, so are you saying that nothing or no one has breached the dome? What about satellites and the space shuttles and Elon Musk's SpaceX project? What do you think? Awesome video. Thank you, Lauren Pettit. No, nothing's breached the dome and nothing has gone up there, Lauren. It's all just part of the show. And that is you fake it. Fake the whole thing. And people will believe it. Why would why would we think that science would lie? NASA is unique. Yeah, of course, the United States military lies in all departments. But we do not remind people that NASA is part of the U.S. military. We don't tell them that. I mean, it's made up mostly of Air Force employees, as far as the, the astronauts are concerned. And they are Department of Defense all the way, built on the still smoldering ashes of the Nazi war machine. I mean, uh, Werner von Braun, the founder of the whole thing, he was one of the V2 pioneers. Look at that if you get a chance. So, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm rambling. No, nothing's been up there. Nothing's breached the dome. This one's called Smiley Face. Hmm, literally. This, uh, okay, uh, Mark, I sent you pictures. Pay attention to the points I've rounded up. That's what I've tagged to make it easier to get married and have a place to go. Don't know why that was said. Uh, with little effort, inverting images, link each point. It is the shape of Antarctica is composed of shapes that we can see in the dark parts of the moon. All of them are blended and make up a non-existent continent, a forbidden zone, and it's drawn on the globe. Anyway, I think that part which really exists, but on a different sh shape, Consists of three or four groups of islands with ice around them. I suppose they were scattered on three or four sides of the world and something else much more important than this The moon seems to catch a reflective light from the earth because it is electromagnetic so it can be seen Continents, but it is distorted like a glass dome and is reflected in the still undiscovered soil in the picture I have sent you you can see the disagreeable look of today's world first you come across 
Africa, it will remain easier. I've rounded up in the picture. It seems that the Masons, looking at the moon, made an outlandish variant of the flat Earth, so a globe merged. So all dark shapes from the moon, when combined, show the look of Antarctica on the globe, which is impossible to be the case. And secondly, it seems that the moon, when the picture is turned on a blackboard, has an outdated and deformed image, as lively all that is on a flat Earth. It is the easiest way to first find first Africa to see that part of the world is known to us, a little deformed, looks like a, looks like it's a bit dirty. By the heliocentrism, this is all possible, and we have it. Black on white, the moon cannot hide. You need a little time to track baseline lines per month, but you are persistent. I suggest you take a regular pencil and follow the screen, a video called A Flat Country on a Moon, Man Understood the Essence. The moon could be a cause of tide and feel because it emits cold light and water is the only material that cools down, so there is a tidal wave. It's about electromagnetism, mag not about gravity. So maybe the sun could go out and run like it was reflected on the dome. My en Oh, my English language is not good. <laughs> I, used, I used a Google Translate. Sorry. Oh, that would explain it. Because, yeah, some of, the, some of the, the, the combinations here were not making sense. You probably, look, if English is not your first language, you might want to open it with that. That way I won't be slightly confused as I'm going through this thing. But thank you. This one's called JFK Assassination, which is an interesting title. Mark, do you have any insights on the Candy's Brothers Assassination? Dan Kaminsky. Uh, yes, I do, Dan. The Kennedy brothers were... Uh, John um, John Kennedy was killed because he had no allies. He was a uh, pain in the ass in the system. But both brothers were killed mostly because this was a long-term problem. you got to remember, and I, I won't drag this out too much, that th the reason why he was killed in 1963 is because what was going to happen in 1964? Re-election time. And John Kennedy was so popular... By 1963, I, short of Jesus running against him, I think everybody else would have lost. And they knew this. So then you had... So remember, the powers that be are patient up to a point, but when they see a long-term problem in, in advance and they know there's nothing they can do about it with tr traditional means, conventional means, they're going to do something. So JFK gets re-elected in 64. Let's do an alternate history. Gets re-elected in 1964. That takes him from 64 to 68. And then you got Bobby, who people love just as much. He's going to step right in. I mean, and it is perfect transition. So Bobby Kennedy, he gets elected from 68 to 72. Gets re-elected from 72 to 76. Holy smokes. Then, if you're lucky, and the whole, you know, at that point, you the um, the Teddy Kennedy controversy maybe would have been buried even deeper or um, forgiven to a larger extent because you'd already had 16 years of Kennedy. So maybe Teddy Kennedy steps in in 76, and they, the thing keeps going. I mean, oh, my God, Lord, it, it was never ending. So the powers of be said, yeah, we're not going to deal with this for that long. Let's just stop this thing now. So JFK was assassinated in 63, and then that was supposed to be a warning to Bobby. And Bobby, it was just too tempting. There were too many people saying that, oh, yeah, you should run for president, and he absolutely would have won. And so they wouldn't even let him get out of the primaries. And that was it. So he, he never even made it to the, to the big ballot box. So yeah, that's why they were killed. They weren't just killed because they um, were causing trouble. It was also because they were so popular that they were going to become a long-term problem. And th that was the only, the only way to get rid of them. They could not find a candidate to run against them to that, would, that would win. You got to remember, JFK wasn't even supposed to win the first election. It was... Um, uh, the guy that was supposed to win it was Dick Nixon, a young Richard Nixon, and uh, much more dynamic. And so by the time Dick Nixon finally got to be a president after LBJ, the uh, he had lost you know some of his charisma, and then the guy was ended up being the, the only impeached president in history. So uh, that's my little little rant about JFK. He he had no allies. Look, if you're going to be in political power, don't be Caesar. And don't, I mean, you got to have somebody on your side. Name me some, some politicians that were backing JFK at the time. Everybody hated the guy in politics. 
the but the popular people and part of that had to do with Jackie, his wife. The, the and it also doesn't hurt when you're having an affair with Marilyn Monroe. He was so popular outside of the political circles that he was almost unstoppable in in that aspect. So, but you know, that was back when politics turned to the dark side, even darker, I should say. They've always been dark. All right, this one's called Watched Under the Dome. Hello, I have some thoughts inspired by your video. Maybe the flat earth map isn't accurate and there isn't as much water between large land masses. Why would they guard the Antarctic if it were virtually unreachable except by someone with extraordinary resources? You wouldn't guard something that couldn't be reached. Maybe they just put the mental barrier out there that the Antarctic was guarded like sleight of hand when edges of the dome can be reached by land. When I was a child, I would see fences being guarded by the military. The fences looked tall and durable enough that no one would could go over or through them, so why guard them? For a number of years, so long that I can't say how many before exposure to anything like your video, I've been able to see in my mind's eye something in some place that I've thought of as the edge of the earth, and it never made sense to me. But I can tell you that the place, the piece of which, which I can still perceive, is over land. Cheryl. Hmm, it's good. Thanks, Cheryl. This one's called Request. Hello, Mark. I've seen your videos and they are great. However, there's something I don't understand. I hope you will help me in shedding light on this topic. The last video I saw was about the Flat Earth and the other many lands beyond the poles. What I don't understand is people say there is a dome and there are waters above. Admiral Byrd would have discovered a land as big as the United States and a Buddhist map shows the flat earth with many lands. These things don't match. If we are immersed in a giant ocean of water, then it would not be possible for us to see other lands. Waiting to read you. Sincerely yours, Antonio. Uh, I don't think, I, he's not from this country, I don't think. Um, no, no, I don't think there's any problem with that because you get to remember, there's a huge, huge, if you make it to the coastline of Antarctica, the Antarctic, co the, the Antarctic shelf goes on for a lot longer than I think we're being told. Enough to where Admiral Byrd was flying around it for 30 years before he finally figured out where the edge of this thing was. So, yes, we, should be able, we, we wouldn't be able to see lands over water anyway, also because the, uh, what we're breathing is, is uh, kind of a soup. I mean, it's 20% oxygen and 80% nit nitrogen, give or take with some trace gases. So that's like looking through a thin version of water. So even after a couple hundred miles, it's going to start to get foggy and murky, and then you're not going to be able to see anything. So that works out pretty well. The atmosphere was designed well enough to where we couldn't see forever. Some, cause some people said, well, you know, if you're in California, why can't you see Japan? It's like, well, you can't if you got rid of the atmosphere. If it was a vacuum. I think you actually could see Japan. You know, the, if the water was absolutely dead calm, you would be able to see much, much farther. Just saying. Moving on. This one's called uh, Shipping Lanes Cable Pathways Follow Flight Patterns. Hi, Mark. Long message, but hopefully worth your time. Oh, it doesn't look that long. First and foremost, thank you for your work. I stumbled across your video, They Are Hiding God, this weekend and couldn't turn it off. It really and truly piqued my curiosity. I considered your words and thought, surely this is crap. Well, if it is, it's certainly intriguing crap. That's good. I'm going to steal that. It's <laughs> intriguing crap. So I thought some more. Specifically, I live in Alaska, and each day right above my city, 50 to 70 flights go by overhead from southeast to northwest, according to the compass. Anyone can see this. They just need to purchase a compass of their choice, find true north, look up at the flight trails in the sky, and see for themselves. Each and every flight is somewhere in Canada, lower 48 bound for Asia, China, Korea, etc., as seen on a flight tracking software. They are literally flying towards Siberia, Russia, according to my globe, and do so for as far as the eye can see. Anyone from Yakutut to Bethel can watch this play out hour after hour, day after day. I've witnessed this for years and years and never thought much of it because I have a friend who is a pilot for a major carrier, carrier and he's wicked smart. He ad, has advanced degrees in atmospheric sciences and when I asked him many moons ago, explained to me he wasn't exactly sure why but knew it had something to do with the curvature and spin of the Earth. He said someone much smarter than him figured it out that way, and he just flies the plane. Well, truth be told, the computer flies the plane. He's just there in case of an emergency and to make passengers feel safe. Those are his words. That's yeah, true. 
planes just fly themselves now. So with this in my head, your video and pondering for a bit, I thought, what about shipping lanes? Surely ships will take direct roads across the ocean. After all, the FAA does some strange stuff now and again. And maybe there's some rule about having to be over land for so much percentage of the flight or whatever. Ships, however, run on fuel, and fuel is expensive. There's no way a ship will travel anything but a direct route. Ooh, don't be so sure. So I searched shipping lanes images, and holy crap, the paths are identical. Try it for yourself. If Use your favorite search engine and search shipping lanes. Look at the images and then open a flight tracking software and compare. They are identical. Now for a really crazy one. Most don't know this, but the world is connected by long, long stretches of copper and fiber cable. Specifically, the internet is made possible by giant underwater fiber cables connecting the continents. So I thought, okay, if this is legit, surely the underwater fiber paths will be different. After all, cable companies are notoriously frugal with their money and cable is very expensive. So they will definitely follow a path that makes the most economic sense. Well, surprise, the cable path is the same as the shipping lanes is the same as the flight paths. They can literally be overlaid and interchanged. Search something like ocean cable fiber pathways or internet ocean pathways. Wow, I'm stunned. Anyway, thank you again for your work. Seriously baking my noodle with this one. As a plane flies low overhead. Or a helicopter, I'm not sure which one. This one's called Skywalls in World of Warcraft Illustrate Your Point. Mark, when you beat Tomb of Sargeras on normal difficulty, the sky walls throughout Azeroth change to show Argus now orbiting Azeroth as a kind of moon. Uh, as an illustration of your projection system idea on what the sky is, to be sure. Darren in Lacrosse. Wisconsin. I actually did a family reunion back in La Crosse, Wisconsin, 20 something years ago. Interesting. Thank you, Darren. That was good. This one's called They Are Hiding God. Hi, Mark. Thank you for your work. May I ask, what are your beliefs about God? I believe faithfully that God is in control and has delivered me from intense darkness in my life. I'm still watching your two hour movie, but. I was itching to email you. Regards, Jonathan. And yes, by the time he, you know, I get back to this thing, he would have automatically um, gotten to the part about God in the clues, which I'm, I'm pretty, pretty detailed on, I think. You guys might disagree. This one's called The Eclipse. Hi, Mark. I was thinking this morning on how so many unlikely things have happened lately. With the whole Kyrie Irving coming out as a flat earth realist, Trump in office, the World Series, basketball finals, you can add to that a list of sol uh, solar eclipses that will last so long and which will cross the United States from west to east. How unlikely is that? See you in Raleigh, Alma Ortega. Yeah, weird things. All so many, and I, I talked about this earlier, where there's so many unlikely things that have become likely impossibilities that uh, everything from uh, the United States electing a reality television star as president to the Patriots winning the Super Bowl, even though statistically it was beyond the pale uh, because it was over. The game was over. Uh, it never happened before. Uh, the Oscars, 80-something uh, years of, of the Academy Awards, and they've never given the award to the wrong person ever with all those thousands and thousands and thousands of envelopes. And they literally gave it to the last person last one of the evening which was best picture and i mean and they the the wrong person came up and they actually gave the speech and no one would call him out on it they, you know you finally had a producer running down from the control booth in in a tux and, and getting on stage and kicking them off and then having the other guys come up how weird is that and and then yeah kyrie irving a uh, uh, high profile basketball player saying the world is flat the eclipse which seems so unlikely, and that was the, the first time it had happened um, in the United States in 100 years. Interesting. So many things have been happening this year. Things that would have been near impossible. I'm not going to say totally impossible. Near impossible, and they've all happened. Boom, 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 boom. All, all in less than a 12-month period. Fascinating. This one is called Results of Spreading the Word Picks. Hi, Mark. I don't know if you saw or read my last email. Like I said, I went to, oh yeah, I went to a park by my house with some sidewalk chalk. I tell you, it tells you how long I've been, I'm so backlogged on emails. I'm sorry, guys. And blank, uh, chalk and blanketed the park with research flat earth on everything I could discreetly write on. Rails, 
walls, rocks, and old signs, just hoping someone might take the time to look into it, and never thinking I would get or see a response. Well, I must say I got a very different result than I thought I would. On almost every one of the messages, the word flat was rubbed out, and in a few cases, scratched out with a lot of effort. Needless to say, I went back out and fixed them, and added a few more too. Mu-ha-ha. He actually wrote, Mu-ha-ha. I attach some pics for you to see or use keep it flat from michigan and you know what i'm going to take a look at those pics again sorry keith i'm really bad sometimes at getting these things done this one's called solar eclipse mark any chance we'll see sunlight through the moon during the eclipse sometimes stars shine through the moon so that would blow people away if it happened and no it did not happen that was from william by the way uh, no, I absolutely did not happen. I was down in the blackout zone. It was in the middle of the black, blackout zone in Salem, Oregon with a documentary team. Perfect conditions, utterly flawless conditions, not a cloud in the sky, 90 degree day. Uh, and it was uh, the, the only haze at all was at the very far east. And that was because of the forest fires. And I was there when the blackout happened. And if you didn't get a chance to see it, I know the blackout path was only 70 miles wide. It was gorgeous. It was the closest thing to magic I've ever seen in my life. Uh, a celestial event, I know. And it's 2017, and it still gave me chills. Where the, you know, you can imagine back in the day, if you were an ancient civilization and you ran into a solar eclipse, or you could predict a solar eclipse, imagine the power you could have over people. Fascinating. Which, which is what uh, Mel Gibson portrayed in the movie Apocalypto where they had power over the people because of uh, you know one event they could predict the solar eclipse and when it happened that's like oh yeah we we caused that or we we had the knowledge and you don't this one's called we can we have time for a few more uh this one's called seattle meetup hi mark this is eric i a r e k it was nice to finally meet you and chatting with you here's uh, the license plate i promised to send to you till the next time and yeah it was the um uh, second Washington plate and I already put that up in the plates thing in fact there's another plate thing coming out next week so you guys have a wash if you have a um, uh, flat earth license plate of any capacity I don't care if it's called flat earth or it's flat or flat or NASA sucks or NASA lies or any of those send them to me at msergeant23 at comcast.net and I will put it in my compilation and put it in the slideshow and you'll be immortalized so that's what everybody wants to be don't they holy smokes the font on this is so tiny Give me a second. I got to blow this up. I don't know how he did this. I'll bump it up to, and it's so light. I don't know how he pulled this off, but let's do this. Hello, Mark. My name is Bill. I live in Richmond, Virginia. I am 60 year old Christian man. I have for many years struggled reconciling my faith and believe in the Bible with the current scientific theories of origins. Having said that, I must admit you got me. After a year or so of dancing around this, I am now 95% flat earth. I must leave a little wiggle room in case I have to retract, lol. But your videos really helped me to see it. And my wife, too. Ten years ago, I had an awakening about the events of 9-11. And when I began to see it with new eyes, it brought with it a whole new worldview. I grew up during the Vietnam War era, so I was already very cynical about government and politicians and the reasons we go to war. I went back to the scriptures, the Bible, and I can say without reservation that they do not teach anything close to heliocentrism, but do in fact mention in many places an immovable earth, firmament with water above and below, lights in or above the firmament for signs, measuring time and marking seasons. This is so important because we are either a special creation with vast diversity, complexity, order, and worth from an incredible creator, or we are an accident of random particle collisions assembled by a mindless eternity with no worth, no purpose. Just add enough time, they say. It is no wonder that the 20th century saw so much bloodshed. This is what Copernicus and Darwin have given the world. Half of our country is taking medication for depression and anxiety, and the other half is buried in some form of escape escapism. Yeah, good point. I have a couple of questions that I haven't heard come up in any of your interviews, although I doubt I've heard all of them. Hubble, the man they named the telescope after, is credited with discovering the redshift of starlight, which is the stretching of the red spectrum of light due to stars traveling outward in an ever-expanding universe. This apparently disturbed him because the redshift was equal in all directions, alluding that the Earth was at the center. 
The same with the supposed microwave background radiation, which again is equal in all directions. What do you think about that? I'm sure some scientist will sooner or later throw that one at us. Thank you for taking all the time and trouble to educate us. I know it is a thankless job. I'm feeling stronger about this every day, and you have given a great boost to my faith. Yours truly, Bill. And we'll end on that one, but I would like to answer that real quick. And that is, yeah, the red shift going out in all directions from a central point, which is Earth, and the background radiation going out in all directions, pointing that the, the central location is Earth. Doesn't conflict with a flat and closed model at all. In fact, I think it was left as one of the clues, which is if we had the technology and the know-how to figure out, know-how, that's an old term, let's we'll say technology, to notice these things, maybe we would get the hint. They're like, oh, wait, wait, what? Maybe the Earth is the center of the universe. And if it is the center of the universe, who's to say how big the universe really is? On that note, let's uh, let's wrap it up. Remember, you can email your questions, comments, whatever you want, and I'll read. I'll even read troll emails if they're not so bad. To m s a r g e n t twenty three at comcast.net. Until next time, guys. Keep it flat.